A few weeks ago, I put out a video showing MS-DOS on the Commodore Amiga. During that video, when we tried to write a few floppy disks, I soon discovered that several of my old disks had started to fail. These old cover disks that we were using in that video, if these fail, I'll be honest, I'm not particularly worried. I mean, I do have an awful lot of these, and if they're dead, well, they can just go in the bin. When it comes to my big box originals though, for those I would like to, where possible, have the original discs working. So I pulled six down from the shelf, just randomly, and unfortunately, out of all of these, the only one that works is Premier Manager 2. All the rest have read errors of some shape, form or another. Beneath the Steel Sky, for example, Discs 1 and 2 installed fine here on the 486, but when it got to disc 3, disc problem on drive A. And unfortunately there's nothing we can do to get past that. This game is effectively out of action. So I've been doing a bit of googling to see if there's anything we can do about it, and it seems that there's maybe three reasons why these discs would fail. So the first reason is that the disk's surface that stores the information in a magnetic flux may start to degrade, as in the strength of that field may degrade, or it may become corrupted by an external magnetic influence. From what I understand though, if you have a disk that has degraded like this, it may still be possible to retrieve the data, and there are a few programs out there that you can download to help with this. I've been doing a little bit of reading on this subject, but to be perfectly honest, it does go a bit over my head. The next reason then, and if we take a look at Monkey Island here, because it unfortunately is a prime example of it. That magnetic media again, it starts to come away from the disc's surface. You might be able to make it out on here. It almost looks like little record grooves have been cut into the disc's surface. And the reason for that is either the heads in your disc drive are dirty and they have physically damaged your disc, or it's possible that the disc's surface is starting to degrade and that material simply comes away from the surface, generally ending up on the drive heads with the potential to further damage other discs. And then the final reason, and if we perhaps take a look at Alfred Chicken, is that the disc's surface becomes dirty. Now, you'll not really see it, especially just through this little small window, but what tends to happen is that mold starts to grow on these discs. And to be honest with you, that's really just down to the way they were stored. You see, a lot of people never stored their old games properly. And I'll hold my hands up and say that some 20 plus years ago, whenever it was, when all these old games were being put away, they were just threw in a box and uh, put in the roof space, which just so happens to be the perfect environment for mold to grow. And in fact, you can maybe see here on the metal cover of this Alfred Chicken disc, some staining. It's not just as polished as you might expect it to be, and that is possibly signs of mould starting to form on this disc. So there's very little we can do about any failing magnetic media, but if the discs are just dirty, supposedly all they need is a clean, and to do that all you need is a bit of IPA. So that's what we're going to try and do today. I'm going to clean all of these discs to see if it makes any improvement. Now, I am a little skeptical as to if it'll actually do anything whatsoever. I mean, Secret of Monkey Island disc does look pretty badly damaged, but we'll try and give it a clean anyway. You never know, it might magically come back to life. I don't think so, given the damage on it. But perhaps the likes of Beneath the Steel Sky here, Disc 3 of it looks fine, albeit it is quite noisy in the drive, so hopefully all it needs is a clean. And just for an example of what a dirty disc might sound like,
So it's that sort of scratching sound that you could hear there as the disc is spinning. That is a very clear sign that the disc is dirty and needs cleaned. So one big pile of floppy disks that need cleaning. The whole idea here is to take a cotton bud and get a little bit of IPA on the end of it. And then all you want to do is hold the disc open and use your IPA to clean the surface of it. Just give it a wipe, turn the disc slightly, give it a wipe. Handy enough to do on this side of the disc but don't forget there are two sides to do and doing this side here is going to be rather difficult because we've got to hold this open while trying to work the thing on the back and which doesn't want to turn and yeah it's just a bit of a pain on the back side. I wonder is there a better way to do this? Well we do have a 3D printer now and taking a look on Thingiverse I found this little frame to hold the floppy disk with the door open and a little knob for turning the disk. That should make life a lot easier. Let's see about printing one out. FL Sun QQS Pro printer, hard at work here. I still am trying to get the grips with this thing, but it seems to be doing a pretty decent job of our little floppy disk holder so far. So here is the finished article, our disk holder and the little knob for turning the disk. I still am trying to get the grips with that printer, but one issue in particular I'm having is that it's missing wee bits just at the edge of the print, just at the walls. Not 100% sure why it's doing that. Uh, there are a million settings, so it is a wee bit of a learning curve. 3D printers are not exactly plug and play, but anyone, any suggestions for why it's missing those wee bits, please let me know. Anyway, the whole idea of this thing here is that you can put the disc in with the door open like that, that holds it. This then, with the little knob on the bottom of it, goes in there and that turns the disc. Just like that. So we can take a cotton bud with a little bit of IPA on it. And this should make life a lot easier for cleaning the disc. That's not a great fit, you know. Just the print as it is at 100% scale. That to me seems slightly small because it was turning the disc and now it's not. Maybe the PLA isn't strong enough. And to be honest with you, even after doing just that little bit there, you can sort of see that the edges of that are slightly rounded. Why is nothing ever simple? So I've reprinted this knob just 5% bigger, marginally bigger, to make that a bit bigger. Let's see if it works any better now. Does seem to be a better fit, but there still is quite a bit of play in it. So you probably could get away printing this maybe at like 110% scale. The actual disc holder itself prints fine at 100% scale, but this thing here does need to be a little bit bigger. I'll add a comment to Thingiverse about that, but let's get back to the cleaning. Then we just need to try and do the other side of the disc. But it is still a bit of a handling match. That said though, I think it is easier than trying to do it without this little housing. And it'd probably be even easier still if I wasn't trying to do it on camera. Right, so you get the idea anyway. All you need to do is clean both sides of the disc. I would maybe leave it a few minutes just to make sure that it does dry off. I mean, this stuff will evaporate fairly quickly. 
So I'm going to do all of these discs here and then we'll test them and try and install Beneath a Steel Sky again on the 486 and I'll pull down the 1200 and we'll try each of these games just to see if they boot. This is actually quite a handy way of doing this. The disc is in the wee holder here and it's just nipped up in the vise, not tight by any means. We're not squeezing into the disc, you know, we can still turn this easily enough, but it holds it for you so that you can work away here cleaning the disc surface, but more so for doing the other side. It just makes it so much easier. Lots of discs to clean. And just before we actually do test it, I am going to pull the floppy drive out of the 486 anyway and give it a bit of a clean. Suppose if we're doing right, we should also clean the drive in the Amiga because I did try all of these Amiga discs in there first of all and I don't want to run the risk that there's any dirt collected up on the heads that would further damage these things. So I've pulled the floppy drive out of the 486 system there. And all we're going to do is give this a bit of a clean. Just want to clean the heads in here after some of these dirty discs were in here. That's all our disc cleaned by the way and it actually was quite surprising the amount of dirt that came off them. In particular, look at the state of that. And believe it or not, all of that came off one side of the Monkey Island disc, disc number one, the one that had all the damage. It was absolutely disgusting. It will be interesting to see if it will read. Now, I don't think it will because of the damage that was on it, but we'll see soon enough. So we're just going to break into this drive. So it's really just lift the metal up over the little tabs. That allows that to come off. And then do the same again with this side. And all we want to do Take another clean cotton bud with a little bit of IPA on it and give the heads a bit of a clean. Don't forget to do the head on the top as well. One little speck of dirt came off it. They weren't that bad but definitely worth doing. And since we're in here, just take a little bit of white lithium grease and we're just going to spray it on the stepper motor here and the little rail down in here that the drive head moves back and forward on. Don't worry about spreading that about too much. I mean, the first time you power this drive on, it'll do its seek test, move that back and forward and that will just lubricate the whole rail. Right, just put it back together. Simple as that. I'll pull the drive out of the Amiga 1200 as well, just to give it a bit of a clean. Just in the same fashion. And then we can start testing these discs. Okay. Let's see if we can't install Beneath a Steel Sky. So still list the directory okay. That's always good. And seems to be working. Try and install it on the games directory. On problem straight away. Not good. Did seem to get past it there, but that disc did work perfectly last time. 
So has cleaning it actually damaged it somehow? Well, despite that one hiccup, it has worked its way through this one. Try this too. And a problem with this too as well. This is not looking very good, is it? It has continued again, but we're getting lots of read errors. At least it did move past the errors on disk one and two. The error on disk three, it's never gotten past it. Let's see. And there we are. There's that problem again. Let's just try it. It doesn't look good, does it? One more time. Yep. It hasn't done anything. In fact, if anything, Cleaning these discs has probably made them worse because we are now getting errors on disc one and two as well. Whereas we definitely weren't before. Let's pull down the 1200 and then we'll try the Amiga discs. Right, let's try out these Amiga games. And the first one I want to try is Premier Manager 2. This did work before. Let's see if it still does. Yep, seems to be. I always have to have Halifax Town in this game. Oh, Code Wheels, who remembers these? So blue and white shirt and yellow and red shorts, number 18. Forty one. And this will just let us test this too as well. Not looking good. We are getting a software error. Let's just try it one more time. Nope, same problem again. Another software failure. Another game out of action. So it certainly seems to me anyway that cleaning these discs, or so-called cleaning these discs anyway, has uh, just made them worse. Let's just try these other ones quickly. So Sensible Soccer before just refused the boot. Hey. This game definitely did not boot before. And it seems to have booted fine. Do we finally have some success here with cleaning discs? I don't have a joystick connected, so I don't think we can go any further. What about Overdrive? Again, this game would not boot. Oh, that disc still sounds really bad. Yeah, just a guru straight away. I think that disc is just done. That game's dead. Alfred Chicken. 
Another one that would not boot. Won't even go into this drive. There we are. So last time this game just threw a lot of radio errors and wouldn't move past them. What's it going to do now? I don't believe it. It has loaded with no problems. Another success. I am genuinely surprised by that. And it's made it into the menu. Yeah, so another success. Alpha checking seems to be working again. What about this though? Monkey Island. With all that damage on the disc surface, um, I really don't think this will load, but let's try it. Again, that disc does not sound healthy on that drive. So it would boot to that, and then it would start throwing radars. There we are. And yeah, I think that's the same on disc block 583. One more time. Yep, and that's probably down to the actual physical damage on the disc surface. As we thought, Secret of Monkey Island is out of action. I'm a little disappointed that um, this game now also doesn't work. This was working fine before, but it's this too now. Let me try it one more time. Well, what do you know? This time it does seem to have got past it, but it seemed to take forever reading this disc. Well, let's finish off with disc 3 and actually load the game. And seemingly it has. So just to be thorough, and just on the off chance that there's something wrong with the floppy drive on the 486, which I don't think there is because I was using it previously to format discs and whatnot. But just as I say to be thorough, I want to try installing Beneath the Steel Sky on the 286. The system might be a little weak to run the game, but we should be able to install it at least. So interestingly on the 286, it has made it so far through discs 1, 2 and 3 without any problems whatsoever. So maybe that disk drive in the 486 does have other problems. And as soon as he speaks, there's a disk problem with disk 4 of Beneath the Steel Sky. Well, so close, but unfortunately, no. The tail end of disk 5 must have some serious error on it. It will not move past 89%. So while it did make its way right through to that point, Beneath the Steel Sky is uh, no good. So, conclusions then. Is it worth trying to clean your discs? Well, Premier Manager 2, it worked beforehand and after cleaning for some reason gave us a few problems, but it did get there in the end, it did boot. Alpha Chicken and Sensible Soccer, both those games definitely would not boot before. Both give read errors. But after cleaning, as you've seen, both of them booted up fine. Overdrive and Monkey Island. Well, Monkey Island in particular, as we've seen during cleaning, there is quite a bit of damage on disc one. And that's probably the main reason why that is just gone. But after closer inspection, disc one of Overdrive also has one nasty big scratch in the disc surface. So that's probably the reason why that game also is dead. Probably nothing cleaning could have done there. 
I am a little disappointed though with Beneath a Steel Sky that we couldn't get that up and running. Um, there's no signs of physical damage on the discs at all here. So possibly these discs are losing their magnetic field that I spoke about earlier. That goes way over my head. So don't ask me any difficult questions there. But that might also suggest why on the 286 system, perhaps it has a stronger disk drive. And that's why the installation got a bit further. But unfortunately, that game is just dead. You can't download it and play it for free though, over on good old games. So there's always that. As for the Amiga games, well, most people will be using a WHD load library. But in terms of the floppies, cleaning, would I recommend doing it? Probably yes, if you have the materials lying around. Even better if you have a 3D printer and you can make one of these. You can actually buy this as well online and I think it costs about £15, something like that. So maybe if you have a lot of floppy disks and you want to give it a go, it might be worth you know, picking this up because it does make life a bit easier. I'm not totally convinced though that cleaning has actually done very much here. Yes, it did bring those two back to life, but I don't know. I'm of two minds about it, to be perfectly honest. If anyone else has tried cleaning floppy disks and has any sort of success with it, please let me know in the comment section below. But that's it for now. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up as it does help the channel. Why not subscribe if you haven't done so already? We recently surpassed 2,000 subscribers, so thank you very much everyone who has subscribed to the channel and continues to support me. Plenty more yet to come on CRG, and I'll see you next time.